This next project is called the Infix Translator, and it has a couple of things that end up being pretty important in computer science built into it. So the first thing is that we're going to be using something called a binary tree. So a binary tree is basically something that has a value inside of it and has a left and a right child. In computer science, trees are upside down. I don't know why, but there you go. So this is the root of the tree is what they call it. And then this is the left child and the right child. And then those nodes might have left and right children, and so on and so forth. So you can either have no children, just a left child, just a right child, or both. And then, as you would expect, much like a family tree, they call this like the parent. Uh, these are the children. Uh, sometimes they will call these the leaves down here, the furthest thing down. And the root of the tree is the one that starts it all. So this is a way of organizing data. We're going to be using it in order to do some mathematics. So reverse Polish notation. So we're used to writing things such that you can say 3 plus 4, and it gives you the answer. But really, it doesn't have to be that way. You could say 3, 4, plus, and the plus just applies to the two previous numbers. So this is also called postfix notation. And actually, some engineering calculators still use reverse Polish. There's also prefix notation, where you put the plus sign before it. And infix is what we're used to, where you have 3 plus 4, and you put it in between. So our goal with this particular project is to take read in something in infix notation, and then your program will have, give you the option of giving you the other two. And we're going to do this by creating an expression tree. An expression tree is basically a binary tree. So we're, instead of just having numbers in here, we're also going to have the pluses, minus, times, divide symbols in here, which represent the actual addition, subtraction, so on from a particular expression that we've entered in. So what we're going to start with is, can we create a binary tree just straight up? Can we make one? So I'm going to create a new Java project. Call it the Infix Translator. And I'm going to create a, two new classes. The first one is going to be my main one, Infix Translator, which is going to have my main method in it. Then I'm also going to create a new class, which I'm going to call binary node. So this thing is actually going to be containing data that I'm going to be worried about. So I'm going to use strings in order to get things in and out. So I'm going to have a string, maybe I'll call this value. And I'm going to have a left and a right child, potentially. These are actually also going to be binary nodes. Binary node left, binary node right. So these are the things that are going to be contained within a binary node. So while I'm here, let's go ahead and finish this up. Um, let's create a constructor, public binary node. So when I create a new one, uh, potentially what I might want to do is just give it nothing in the parentheses. And so I'm just going to set it to be the empty string for the value. Left is going to be a special key value, which is null, which means it's pointing at nothing. And I'm going to set that for the right child as well. So when something is null, you're not allowed to access it. But you can check to see if something is null. It's basically pointing to nothing in memory. Now, I also might want to do a binary node where I give it a string. Uh, new value. So I'm going to set value equal to new value. I still haven't given it a left and right. and right equals null. Now you may notice that I'm doing this over and over again, this left and right thing. I'd kind of like to just uh, have it set once up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this. As strangely as it sounds, what this is doing is this is calling this constructor up here, because there's nothing in the parentheses. So this constructor is just going to use the one just above here. It'll set the values to null and the value to the empty string, and then I'll just change the one I care about. Now I might want another one where I actually give it the left and right children. So maybe string new value. 
binary node, new left, binary node, new right. So if I'm handing it the values I want it to set to, um, I think I'm just going to say value equals new value. I could have called this constructor, but I don't really need to. Left equals new left, right equals new right. So if I pass in all three values, I just set them within it. Now what if I want to uh, get these out, or if I want to set them later on? So I'm going to create these things called getters and setters. So when I want to actually alter the things inside of here, I need a method where I say, hey, binary node, set your value to be whatever it is that I give it. Or I can ask a binary node, what is your value, and gets back the string. The way that it works is I can say, so this is the typical way that you would do a getter and a setter for, let's say, this string here. So the getter, I'm going to say string. I guess I could say public string. So I'm getting back a string, because I'm going to get back, getting back whatever the value is, get value. I don't need to feed it any information, because I'm just asking it what its string value is. And all I'm going to return is the value. So if I ask it of, uh, what its value is, it'll actually return whatever that string is that's contained inside of it. What if I want to set it? So I'm not going to get anything back, so it's going to be void. But I do need to give it whatever the thing is that I want to assign it. So new value will be the value coming in. So I just need to say, all right, your value is the new value. So this is the general pattern for getters and setters. The get value just gives back whatever it is. When you set a value, you feed it in the value you want to change it to inside of the parentheses, and you change the internal uh, field inside of it. So the same pattern applies to the left and right. So I'll go ahead and do those. Public binary node get left return left. And the setter for that will be public void set left. And I'm going to feed it a binary node here. New left. Left equals new left. And it's the same thing with right. Public binary node get right. Return right. Public void set right. Feed it a binary node. New right. Right equals new right. So this is the general way that if you are altering or getting the fields inside of here, these things are called fields, the data members inside of it, then you want to use gets, getters to get values and setters to change the values. You will sometimes hear these called mutators and accessors, though not usually by me, because getters and setters makes more sense to me. So now I have a class that I can actually start messing with and see what it gets. So to begin with, in here, let's create a new infix translator so that we're no longer in the static method. Public infix translator. There we go. So here I'm actually going to try creating my nodes. Let me take a moment to mention this static thing. So what does the keyword static do? Well, to understand this, you need to understand what a, uh, an object is. So if I'm an infix translator here and I say, all right, I'm going to have a binary node named root, which is going to be used for the infix translator. And I say root is a new binary node, and I'll feed it a 5. This is creating a new object of type binary node. And what it does is it feeds in this 5 value into the binary node over here. So I'm actually using this particular constructor right here. The 5 gets replaced by new value. It assigns it internally. And then I assign it this name root. So root is a binary node. It's a new object of type binary node. This is called the class. The binary node class is kind of like the blueprint for how you make one of these things. And now that I have 
a root, I can ask it things like, what is your value? What is your left? What is your right? And it'll actually give me back those values. So if I go to here, I can say root dot get value. So maybe I want to print that out to system out. Look, it's a five. Exciting. 